Pastor Chris, True Life Way. We've had a great day. Hope you're having a great weekend. Today, I would like to encourage someone. How many of y'all know sometimes we need some encouragement in our lives? Sometimes we need somebody to encourage us. We all need someone to help us to keep moving forward, to keep us pushing and going in the right direction, right? To keep gaining, to keep striving. And perhaps today you are at a crossroads, whether it's in this room, you're trying to figure out what you want to do, or you're at home watching this, wherever you may be, you're at a crossroads in your life and you've been going and going and going and going and you just don't know where to go from here. You know, sometimes it happens, sometimes it's like that. You get tired, you're sore, you're aching, and you're ready to just throw in the towel and just walk away and give up. No need to keep on going. Nothing seems to change anyways. Nothing's getting any better. And if that sounds like you today, I'd like for you to stick around and just let me talk to you for just a little bit for a few moments and let me give you some words of encouragement today. If you'll turn your Bibles to the book of Hebrews chapter 12, I want to read three verses. I'll give you just a moment to get there. And when, and when you're there, say amen. 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 All right, starting at verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with such with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest, be weir lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. If you bow your heads, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this day that you give us. God, we thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. I ask you let this message be a seed planted in someone's life today. God, let it grow and nurture in them. And as we said earlier, if they're at this part in their lives, they're at this crossroads, that they're not sure where to go, that they've been walking and going and they're just tired, Lord. God, I just ask you let this message reach the ears of those that need to hear this message, God. And let them know and let them hear these words of encouragement to keep going, to keep pushing, to keep striving, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for that. We love you and we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name pray. And the church said, Amen. 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 Therefore, since we have so great cloud of witness surrounding us, let us also lay aside everything that weighs us down and the sin that so easily entangles us. It tangles us up. And let us run with endurance this race that's set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. Remember that. He endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sat down at the right hand of God on the, on the throne. For consider him who endured such hostility. Think about it. Endured such hostility by sinners against him. So that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So we have to fix our eyes on Jesus. We have to lay down everything that weighs us down and holds us back. Amen. We have to throw these things down that holds us back. Put down anything that weighs us down you know we talked about this in the past when you when you see people in a, in a race a road race or whatever they're not carrying everything they have to carry on their backs right they're not they're not throwing all this extra weight on them trying to run this race to to win what do they do they dress lightly and uh, most of these races i've seen because you know we used to work with them in uh, loganville they would have stations where they would have water they didn't even carry water with them while they're doing these races they come up to a table as they're running, they grab the water, and then they would usually, you know, miss the trash can as they threw it in there. So we'd have to pick that up. But I'm saying they don't carry all this weight with them when they're running this race. We have to put down anything that will hold us back and the sin that will tangle us up, that trips us up. Amen? We have a race to run, and we're told to run this race with what? Endurance. Jesus is the author and perfects our faith. He endured the cross. That's why I want y'all to think about that. He endured the cross, despising shame. He endured the hostility of sinners against himself. Think about that. Against himself, the hostility of sinners. He kept going. Think about it. He kept going the hill of Calvary. 
He went through the the, the beating, the mocking, the and, and all the you know the spitting on them, the slapping them, and you know all that bad, terrible stuff. He endured that for us, but he kept going. He didn't stop halfway. At any point in time, we've said this before. He could have called down a whole host of angels to pull him out of that situation, but he didn't. He kept going. So this is an encouragement to you, wherever you are at in your life currently, to keep going and do not lose heart. Amen? Keep going. So today, if you hadn't figured it out already, I would like to preach a message called, Keep Going. Somebody say, Keep Going. Keep going. I want to encourage someone today who feels like they can't keep going. And of course, if you follow True Life Way for any length of time, you know that I like to preach on personal experiences, things that's actually happened, whether it be something that happened you know, when I was young or, or things that was recently. And today is no different. Today is no different. I'm sure Whitney probably already has an idea of where this is probably going. I'm about to keep going, do you? Have you thought about it? She's thought about it. She's at, she thinks she hasn't. She, ain't, she just had not thought far enough, I guess, or far enough back, maybe. But our scripture reading told us to keep going, to throw down everything that might slow us down, and the sin that you can get tangled up in. Brother Chris, how many times are you going to say that? We're going to say this to make this point. We have to run this race with endurance. This isn't new scripture. We've read it before, but it fits with something that happened to Whitney and I the other day. Now you understand? You know where I'm going with this? Yeah, and uh -huh. yeah now she knows where I'm going with this. She knows... But before we get to that, we are seeing that this is the example of Jesus, how he had to face the hostility of sinners. He had to face all this. While he was being mocked, while he was being beaten, he went to Hill Calvary, where he would eventually give up the ghost for the salvation of everyone everywhere. Amen? Well, this past Monday, Whitney and I were on vacation, and we were camping at Fort Yargo. We camped out there for two nights. We both track our steps with a watch. I got my watch on right now. And she has a goal of, of 7,000 steps each day. I've got a, mine's just default to 6,000 each day. I usually get at least, you know, that or more while I'm at work, but I've been on vacation. She says she needed to go get some steps in and, you know, I'll, I'll, I, and asked if I wanted to walk with her. And at first I declined. I turned her down. I was in the tent just lounging pretty much. But then I decided I didn't want her walking by herself. So I got up off the air mattress, put on my shoes, and we started on our trek. We st and, I, and I don't know if it was the yellow trail. I, I don't know what trail we wound up getting on. Was it, the, it was the yellow trail, I think, initially. I don't even, I don't remember. But we, anyways, we get on there. I don't know if it's yellow or blue, but we start off. So, and, and just a little side backstory. Whitney goes walking with her friends sometimes at Yargo. And they were doing some geocaching things. If you don't know what that is, I know everybody in this room here does because we've went out and done it ourselves. But it's like you go out and you, there's like something hidden in it may be an ammo box. Most of the ones I've seen have been ammo boxes with stuff hidden inside. You can Sometimes you can leave something, take something. There's a uh, you know, log book, write, write down the date, uh, your name. I found this on such and such day, whatever. Well, Whitney and her friend the other day couldn't... Uh, I guess a couple weeks ago, couldn't find this particular geocache. So we're just like, well, why don't we try to find it? We're we're not that far off. So, and the description of its location made it seem like it was literally going to be like right off the path. It made it sound like, you know, because it's going to be easy to find. It's right there, not hard to find. Because it actually said, if I ain't mistaken, but Whitney, I think it said it was well marked and the path was well defined. It was a well defined trail. Is that, I think that was the word in there. It was along that line. But just a side note, you know, I, I'd like to ask the people that wrote the description if they want to borrow my glasses because the trail was not well defined. It was not well marked. Now the tree, the forgiving tree, I can understand where they got that from. But that trail was not, that where we had to get off trail to get to it was not forgiven. Let me tell you that right now. It was not a well-defined trail, and it was not just off the trail, but a ways off. All right? Long story short, guess what? We did actually find the geocache. The, the, is that what you call it when you find the geocache? The item, the ammo box uh, hidden in the tree. And I'll admit that it was a very unique-looking tree. Like I said, I can, I can understand. And I'm going to put a picture of the tree 
in the ammo box. The problem was that it was definitely off the trail. It wasn't marked, as we said, and we had to find our way back to the trail that we were on originally. And I didn't know how long this trail was. Whitney wasn't sure how long this trail was. And we were discussing whether we should just keep going along the path because maybe we're like halfway done with the trail or should we just turn around and go back the other way? Well, you know, as they say, hindsight's what? 2020. If we had to do it over again, Whitney and I, we're going to turn around and go back the other way. We learned the hard way that we weren't halfway around the trail already. We was probably barely even a quarter of the way around the trail if we're going to be honest about it. All right, would you agree with that statement? But I was thinking that maybe the trail wasn't so long, and after we found the geocache thing, we got back on the trail and kept going. We walked and walked and walked. Somebody else want to say walk? Maybe we walked some more, and we got back to, uh, like I said, we was on the trail, we walked forever, and we walked forever. I mean, seriously, walked forever. And at some point, you would think it would have clicked that maybe we should have just turned around and went the other way. But it didn't. Like We kept going. We kept going a little bit more. We come across this bridge. It's like, hey, this bridge is going to take us to the other side. But I don't know Whitney remembers. It's like, this is the bridge. It's going to take us there, and it won't be that long to get to the campsite. It'll just be a short hike. All right, well, we were wrong. <laughs> that was not the right bridge. Uh, we were on a trail that would, that would have a steep grade going up going down twists and turns that was made for bicycles to be on or bikes i don't know if people say bicycle anymore but a uh, couple of times we would joke and say well i guess this is how it's going to end this is how it's going to end we're going to be out here in the woods we're going to pass out and die we literally we were literally to the point well i don't know about whitney but my calves were burning you know i do a lot of walking at work but that's usually like mostly flat stuff walking maybe a couple of stairs I'm not used to going up to grades like this where I'm, I'm climbing up Mount Everest, you know, it's, it's different. So my calves are burning, feet was hurting, I'm wearing blue jeans, so that causes all kinds of other problems. We're not planning on this length of a trek, all right, so obviously we had no water with us, we had no trail mix, no nothing, like absolutely nothing. And it was the evening. And it was the evening. Sunday. It, yeah, and, oh yeah, that's right, and it was, that's right, it was evening. We could already see the uh, sun going down. I mean, we, like we were losing daylight as we were walking. And not to mention, we're both diabetic. So, you know, all that exercise, all that walking just caused your sugar to plummet. It's like, well, I don't need a fallout out here. But anyways, we were both getting really tired. You know, I, like I said, I love using personal, personal experiences when I do these sermons. We were getting really tired, and I believe God wanted me to do it. We were getting really tired. We were far away from camp. I mean, we were far. We were much further from camp than we thought. We were at the point that we couldn't just stop. This is something that Whitney and I talked about. We actually talked about it the other day because we've been we're, we're walking out there. But we were at the point where we couldn't stop. Right, Whitney? We, we had no choice but to keep going. Someone say keep going. Keep going. Someone say keep going. We had to keep going. <clears throat> that was us on Monday. No matter how tired we were getting, no matter how bad our legs were hurting, no matter how bad our feet were hurting, no matter how snackish you might have been getting, no matter how shaky you might have felt, we had to keep going. We were running out of daylight. No drinks. We couldn't stop. We had to go before it got nighttime. I mean, yeah, I had my phone with me. I actually had my, my phone that I'm recording with this now. And I had my S8 with me because I take my old phone. It has no service, but I have to use it to take pictures sometimes. And I said, well, worst case scenario, I'm not going to use much battery on my, my good phone. So if we have to, I can use it as a flashlight. And then I have the S8 as a backup because I didn't take any pictures. You know, after I realized well, it's going to take forever to get back, and I might need this flashlight too. So... It was a big deal. It actually was. I mean, that's not, I'm not saying we were, we were on a trail, so it's not like we were lost, but we were running out of daylight and had nothing with us. We didn't have a trail map, which Whitney did wind up finding one online on her phone. The problem was, what good is a map if you don't have a landmark, a point of reference to go by to say, okay, we're here on the map. I mean, at least sometimes you might say, okay, well, we passed something that looked like this. This might be where we're at. You give you a rough estimate. There's trees around us. Yeah, I guess you could have seen the bridge, but it's like, was it this bridge or was it that bridge? You know, we didn't know. 
wasn't exactly sure where it was at. So eventually we decided that when we found a road, we were just going to follow that road. Because once you get to the big, the main, the, you know, the road inside the park, just follow the road and get there easy. It might be a little bit longer around or something, but at least we know where we're going. Long story short, again, we did wind up finding our campsite after walking three hours nonstop. Nonstop walking. And I I was ready to collapse at the end of that walk. I'm not going to lie to you. Like I said, I'm used to walking a lot at work, but it's flat. It's not going up Mount Everest and stuff. Seven and a half miles. Seven and a half miles is what we ended up walking. And then you might, somebody might think, well, seven and a half miles ain't that big of a deal. But when it's going up and down like that, it, yeah, let me tell you something. It's a big deal. It changes things. But as I mentioned before, we were at a point where we had to keep going. There was no one coming to get us. It wasn't like we could call Christopher and say, hey, bring the truck. We're waiting here at this such and such road. No, there was nothing we could do. Nor would a truck even be able to get out there. We would have had to have made our way to the road in the first place. But it was keep going or camp on the trail, on the trail, pass out or die. If you want to be frank. I couldn't shake the thought of we got no choice. I mean, I kept thinking about we've got no choice. We've got to keep going. We have to get back to the campsite. And I mean, when you've walked this far and you're getting tired, it can be a scary thought, especially when you're diabetic. We kept going. And I want to encourage someone today to keep going. While me and Whitney was out there walking this trail, there were times where she would take the lead. She's going and she's... All right, we got this. We got this. And she's encouraging me. Then other times she would back off. I would take the lead. Like, we got this, bird. We got this. We got this. We can keep going. And I know for some of you out there, you are to a point where you have to keep going. But you're growing tired. You're getting weak. You're, you're tired of moving on. You're, you, you say, well, it would be easier if I just quit. It would be easier if I just stopped what I was doing. If I just stopped moving all together. If I just threw that towel in, amen, if I just got rid of it, I don't have to keep moving. I don't have to keep pushing. I don't have to keep striving because, Brother Chris, I'm tired of doing it. I tell you, me and Whitney, we were tired of walking at that point. I do have a picture of Whitney when she was sitting at the campsite, which I will not put in this video. But just say it was something like this. Because I was doing the same thing. We're tired. But I want to tell you today that I'm here for you. Y those of you in this room, yeah, this is my family. I'm here for you. Those of you that are watching at home, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I, I, you can text me. You can call me. I'm, I'm an email away. Our email address is posted on the, the Facebook. You can message us. You can message me directly on Facebook. There's ways to get in touch. But I'm here for you. I'm encouraging you. I'm praying for you. And I love you. I'm telling you to keep going. Keep going. Keep pushing. I want to see you cross the finish line. You know, this is one of those races where, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to finish this race. I'm trying to run this race. I'm trying to win this race. But I'm also trying to bring Whitney with me to win this race. I'm trying to grab Carson and my other son, Christopher. I'm trying to bring us all in across the finish line together. Amen? We all have a common goal here. I want to see you cross the finish line. So I'm telling you to keep going, keep going, keep going. Fix your eyes on Jesus and let him help you through. And I mentioned it briefly, but I honestly believe that God kept us going through all that, that, he, that it was a confirmation for me to encourage somebody today to keep going. I really do believe that with all my heart. That he wanted me to encourage someone out there that's tired. They're, 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 they're ran down. They're just sick of walking. They're tired of growing weary to keep going. How, how many of y'all, like I said, when at the very beginning of this message, I asked you how many of y'all realize sometimes that we need some encouragement? And now it may have seemed minuscule at the time, but it was kind of uplifting when and encouraging when Whitney says, okay, I'm taking the lead. And I'm sure she probably felt the same way because then I would take the lead. It's like, come on, we got this. We got this. We can do this. Wait upon the Lord. That brings us to Isaiah 40, 
31. Isaiah 40, 31. But they, somebody say, but they, that wait upon the Lord shall what? Shall renew, somebody say renew, their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not be faint. Amen? Amen. Wait upon the Lord. Walk and not faint. Run and not grow weary. Those that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. <clears throat> they will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Come on, somebody. Y'all understand this today, that if we wait on the Lord, amen? We have to wait on the Lord. In the beginning of this, this message, we said we have to fix our eyes on Jesus, amen? We have to fix our eyes on Jesus because he is the author and finisher of our faith, amen? Amen? Y'all, 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 y'all agree with that statement today? So I tell somebody, whoever's out there that needs this encouragement, that needs to hear this, I'm telling you to keep going. And I want to remind somebody today: little progress is better than no progress. Okay, somebody, we need to understand that. So think about this for a moment. Whitney and I is out there walking on this trail. This ain't even in my notes, but Whitney's out. We're walking on this trail. Right? Okay, so when we started off, yeah, we had a brisk little walk going. We were doing pretty good, right? We started off pretty strong. But after we realized we done took the wrong 12 turns, and we our, our three-mile walk turned into seven and a half up, straight up a mountain, I'm just, I'm exaggerating, we slowed down, didn't we? We got, we started slowing down, but guess what? We didn't stop. We kept going. If we had stopped, we wouldn't have made any progress. As we were moving slower, yes, we were going slower, but we were still making progress till, towards the end. Amen? We were still getting to where we needed to go, albeit much slower. But little progress is better than no progress at all. So I'm telling you, keep going today. Brother, keep going. Sister, keep going. Keep moving. Keep striving. I know you're tired. For those of you that are tired, I encourage you to focus on Jesus. For those of you that are that see your brothers and sisters that are getting tired, help them up. Um, amen? Prop them up and let's, let's get them across the finish line. Let's, let's go to Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 as we get ready to close. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor... And are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen? Mm -hmm. I will give you rest. I like to think of that as when Whitney and I finally made it to the campsite, was able to sit down in our little camp chairs. You know, they're not the most comfortable chairs in the world. But it sure felt nice to sit down, didn't it? It felt nice. So I feel, I feel like that was us coming unto Jesus that are heavy laden, he gave us rest. Amen? He will give you rest for those of you that labor and are heavily burdened. Come to Jesus. He will give you rest and strength to keep going. Amen? For those of you out there today, keep going. Don't stop. Amen? Keep going. Well, we're thankful for this day. Give us, God, we thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. I ask you... Let this message reach the ears of the ones that need to hear this today, God. If there's somebody that's been going through something, they've been going. If they're under trial right now, if they're facing a storm, God, if they're if they're at this crossroads and they don't know what to do, if they don't know where to go, God, I ask that you will show them the way, God. Put somebody in their path. Put this message in their path that they got to keep going, that they got to keep striving, Lord. That there, there's people out there that wants to help them up and get them across the finish line today, God. That we're cheering for them and we're clapping for them and we love them today. And we thank you, Lord, for that. We thank you, Lord, for using us today for your glory. We love you and we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And just pray in the church, say amen. 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 Well, I hope you got something out of this message today. Like I said, it's important that we understand to keep going, keep striving, and keep fighting. Amen.
that being said, we love you guys. God bless you. And we will see you on the next one. Take care.